Hello! In today's lesson, we are looking at Chapter 4, Section 3, Proving Triangles Are Congruent Using SSS, which stands for Side, 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 and SAS, which stands for Side, Angle, Side. Our objectives are to prove triangles are congruent using SSS and SAS, congruence postulates. Postulate 19, side, 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 SSS, congruence postulate. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. If side line segment MN is congruent to line segment QR, which are these two line segments here, MN is congruent to line segment QR, and we know that they're congruent because they have one tick mark, and side line segment NP is congruent to line segment RS. NP has two tick marks, which means it's congruent to RS, which also has two tick marks. And side line segment PM is congruent to line segment SQ. Line segment PM has three tick marks, which means it's congruent to line segment SQ because it also has three tick marks. So I have a side 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 of triangle M and P congruent to a side 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 of triangle QRS so we can say that triangle M and P is congruent to triangle QRS using the side 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 congruence postulate. Example 1 using side 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 congruence postulate prove that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JKL. In order to prove triangle congruence we need at least three pieces of information. For this example, we're going to write this as a two-column proof instead of the paragraph proof given in your notes. Please make sure you write this information on the side of your notes or in some free space on your notes. So let's start to prove that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JKL. Looking at the diagrams, I can see that line segment DE has three tick marks, which means it is congruent to line segment JK. I can also see that line segment EF, which has two tick marks, is congruent to line segment KL because they both have two tick marks, and that line segment DF, which has one tick mark, is congruent to line segment JL, which also has one tick mark. So line segment DE is congruent to line segment JK, line segment EF is congruent to line segment KL, and line segment DF is congruent to line segment JL, and that's our given. I have three pieces of information over here. In this case, I have that the sides of triangle DEF are congruent to all of the sides of triangle JKL. And since I have three pieces of information, I can say that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JKL using the side, side, side congruence postulate. Postulate 20, side angle side or SAS congruence postulate. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. This is really important to understand that the angle between the two sides, I call it an angle sandwich, is congruent to an angle between two sides of another triangle. When you have this case, then you can say that triangles are congruent using the side angle side congruence postulate. So if side line segment PQ, which is this side over here, that is congruent to line segment WX. We know they're congruent because they only have one tick mark. We also have angle Q congruent to angle X because they only have one arc. And that line segment QS is congruent to line segment XY because they have two tick marks. Notice over here I have a side, an angle between the two sides and another side congruent to a side, an angle between the two sides and another side. So I can say that triangle PQS is congruent to triangle WXY using the side angle side congruence postulate. Example 2, using side angle side congruence postulate, prove that triangle SYT is congruent to triangle WYX. From the image, we can see that line segment TY, which has two tick marks, is congruent to line segment XY because they both have two tick marks. We can also see that line segment SY is congruent to line segment WY because it only has one tick mark, and that's our given. Since we have two intersecting lines, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 using the vertical angles theorem. I have three pieces of information over here. I have two sides congruent to two sides of another triangle, and I also have an angle 
between the two sides congruent to an angle between the other two sides. And so I can say that triangle SYT is congruent to triangle WYX using the side angle side congruence postulate. All right, checkpoint problem number one is yours. Prove that triangle FGT is congruent to triangle RST. Remember, in order to prove congruence, you need to have at least three pieces of information. You either need to have all the sides congruent to all of the sides of another triangle, or you need to have two sides and an angle between the two sides congruent to two sides and the angle in between those two sides of the other triangle. Example three, choosing a congruence postulate to use. Again, this example is given in paragraph proof. We're just going to do it as a two column proof. Please make sure to write this information in the blank space on your notes. For this example, decide whether enough information is given to prove that triangle WYZ is congruent to triangle ZWX. If there is enough information, state the congruence postulate you would use. Based on the diagram, I can see that line segment WX is congruent to line segment YZ because they both have one tick mark. I can also say that line segment WX is parallel to line segment YZ because it has the two arrows in the line segments and those two arrows mean that those two lines are parallel. So I am given that line segment WX is congruent to line segment YZ and line segment WX is parallel to line segment YZ. The parallel lines are important because with that I can use angle relationships to prove that angles are either congruent or supplementary. So I can use alternate interior angles, I can use alternate exterior angles, I can use corresponding angles or same side or consecutive interior angles. In this case over here, since I have those two lines parallel, WZ is my transversal, so I can say that angle WZY, which is this angle over here, is congruent to angle ZWX, which is this angle over here, using the alternate interior angles postulate. I also notice that line segment WZ is shared by the two triangles, WYZ and ZWX. So both of these two triangles have that same line going through it, which means that this line is the same measure for both the triangles. I can say that line segment WZ is congruent to line segment WC using the reflexive property of congruence. I now have three pieces of information. I have a side length and an angle in between the side lengths and another side length congruent to a side length, an angle between the two side lengths and another side length. So I can say that triangle WYZ is congruent to triangle ZXW using the side angle side congruence postulate. All right, checkpoint problems number two and three are yours. For each of these problems, decide whether enough information is given to prove that the triangles are congruent. If there is enough information, state the congruence postulate you would use. In problem number two, prove triangle PTQ is congruent to triangle STR. In problem three, prove that triangle CMG is congruent to triangle ZMG. Remember, for both of these problems, you need to have at least three pieces of information to prove that the triangles are congruent. You either need to have all of the sides of one triangle congruent to all of the sides of the other triangle, or you need to have two sides and the angle between the two sides of one triangle congruent to two sides and the angle between the two sides of another triangle. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you all soon.